And we're back for another week. It's a special week, though. It's Independence Day. You ready? Let's go. Hi, everyone. Obviously, we're back. We're celebrating Independence Day this week. Now, it's a pretty special week. Not just because you have a three-day weekend. July 4th, fireworks and all. It's actually the day that the Second Continental Congress declared that we were no longer going to be under British rule no longer under, uh, underneath the British monarch and King George III. And this meant that the 13 original colonies were gonna be free, united, and independent of Britain, and we're gonna be able to do our own thing. Now, if that was the ultimate outcome of the Revolutionary War, then the Townsend Act and the Tea Act of 1773 were a powder keg. The Boston Tea Party, that was the fuse. Now, while you're envisioning those mono-flavored red, white, and blue drinks for this weekend, I figured this week, we'd make a proper cocktail. Our cocktail's inspired by the fuse that was the Boston Tea Party. Now, if you haven't gotten the hint, we're using tea this week. Now, at the time of the Boston Tea Party, the colonists were being taxed very heavily on all imports, especially tea. By who? The British East India Company. That's who was importing everything. You've probably heard all about them. Uh, they were also the guys that branded uh, Jack Spar Sparrow in the, uh, in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Anyways. Back to what we're doing. So, British East India Company, and also, and ultimately, England. Now, why did they keep increasing taxes? Well, obviously, they wanted to fill their pockets, but they also, <laughs> they also had a bunch of governors and judges over here that needed to be paid. And not because they were earning it, but because they needed their loyalty in order to keep things situated. Not only that, but they were also using all of these taxes as a means of setting a precedence for tax collection in the colonies. So the Townsend Act happened in 1767, but if you fast forward to the Tea Act in 1773, that's when it really got kind of shitty. <laughs> the Tea Act was enabled to basically save the British East India Company and give them the ability to become a monopoly. Do not pass go! Do not collect $200! So how did this work? Like I said before, ultimately the British East India Company was England. Because tea was so popular, they had a lot of it. They wanted to be the only people, obviously monopoly and everything. But the colonists, they didn't want to pay those high taxes, they didn't want to pay the price for tea from them, so they went and found secondary suppliers. That's when the Tea Act came into play. That basically gave the British East India Company the ability to import tea to the colonies free of charge and actually undercut the secondary suppliers, this wasn't making the colonists very happy. And so here comes the fun stuff. There's a lot of things that, that boiled up to the, to the Boston Tea Party, but that's the main part. Uh, there was some people shot in the Boston Massacre, uh, like five people by nine soldiers. One day people were protesting and throwing stuff, hit the soldiers and soldiers opened up fire and killed five of them. That was like, the first domino. domino well, this new tax and everything, it basically started the run. And the Boston Tea Party, that basically lit the fuse to the revolution. So one night in Boston, a group of colonists known as the Sons of Liberty decided they were gonna take the power back. Sam Adams and uh, John Hancock led the, the group. And they rolled on down to the docks, disguised, snuck onto the boats, and dumped all the tea in the, uh, into the harbor. Nobody died that night. They dumped every single last bit into the harbor. So obviously that was called the Boston Tea Party. That basically spurred the revolution. That was the last little domino to fall before everything started going at it. Eh, we should probably do a, a data check on that, but <laughs> that was a big part of it. We went from going down the road of British rule to make it our own way. A couple years later, independence. And by the way, if you adjust to the price of tea now, add some inflation, they dumped over a million dollars worth of tea into the harbor that night. Just food for thought. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of tea. All right, so that's enough history. Let's make this cocktail. So if you caught our Instagram from yesterday, 
we are definitely using tea in this recipe. What we've made is a tea cordial. So check out our Instagram and you will see the recipe for this. The camera works a little shoddy. Uh, tea cordial to go along with the grenadine from a uh, recipe uh, last week. And then uh, we're just gonna do a little rum. This is Plantation 5, real nice. Has a little bit of a funk to it. Eh. Um, then just some uh, Angostura bitters. And then we'll get out of here because it is a three day weekend. <laughs> ah. so here we go. So first we'll uh, begin with Ooh. OCD. Start with our cordial. We're going to be doing three quarters of an ounce. Next, we'll add our grenadine. Like I said before, we like to go from cheapest to most expensive. That way, we don't screw anything up. We're going to be doing half an ounce here. Next, we'll do our rum. This is gonna be two ounces. You don't have to do two ounces. Um, uh, you can do one and a half, but it is 4th of July weekend. So, uh, on that, started off with a bang. We love fireworks. My dogs love that. Oh, yeah. Last little thing, we're gonna do half an ounce of lemon juice. Then three or four dashes of Angostura. Then we just gotta shake. Get our chilled coop. Then we will express a lemon over top. There we go. And then put a little ship in Boston Harbor. Very nice color, guys. Mm, lemon. It's nice and balanced. Tea comes through. Not gonna lie, it reminds me of a twisted tea. I feel like I just like smacked this thing in the face. Obviously, you're putting tea, you have some sugar, some lemon, you got, I, I mean, that's iced tea. Adding the grenadine gives a little bit of a sour, sourness, and the lemon juice obviously does that too. The rum brings in some, a little sweetness and some booziness, which is nice. Uh, all around, it's a, it's a great cocktail. Mm -mm -mm. It's a great lunch too. <laughs> uh, not only this, 
absolutely try this, but also don't forget to try and make your own tea cordial. This is on the recipes on Instagram and the grenadine from last week's video uh, makes me feel like a vampire. Uh, that's on our, our last uh, YouTube video, the Dirty Shirley. And that'll actually be linked at the end of this video if you just want to click on that and go. The one thing we forgot, actually two things. We didn't give this thing a name. I have an idea. We're going to name it <clears throat> The Great Revolt. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Hit the bell, or that bell, or that bell. Hit them all. Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Absolutely celebrate, but if you are going to have too many, please call a ride share. Call a ride share. Where am I? 1965? You know it. Uber, Lyft, uh, get, you know, carpool. Roads are treasures this time of year, especially around 4th of July. If you're not getting fireworks shot at you, you gotta dodge people that are swerving all over the road. Anyways, guys, it's time to eat lunch. I'll catch you guys on the next one. It's Friday. Cheers. We're celebrating, cut. <sighs> then the Townsend Act and the, uh, cut. Just annoying the out of me. It shouldn't be adjusting. I turn the sensor off. Unless it's all the white balance, that's why it's down there. Uh, cut. It's for tax collection. Who's frubba? Who's frubba? Check it, check it, dong, 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 dong. So one night in Boston, one night in Boston and the world's your tea bag? Uh, cut.